So I'll uh, call the meeting to order uh, for the select board meeting at one minute after five. Any adjustments to the agenda? No. Okay, good. Um, so we need to approve the minutes of January 30th. Uh, I'll move on. Yep. I'll move to approve the minutes of January 30th. Any corrections? Uh, nothing that I saw okay. after the second round. <laughs> uh, uh, so it's been moved and seconded to approve the revised minutes from January 30th, 30th. 2019. Oh, second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do it. <laughs> I didn't realize this as soon as I said yeah. it. I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so now it's been moved and seconded. And uh, if there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, okay, so our first order of business, is, although it's listed under public comment, I had a conversation with Dale Temple today. And it's Dale's daughter, Catherine, who was, well, Dale was bitten also, yes, but yes. Dale's daughter, Catherine, was the one who got bitten up on Park Minimum Road. Um, she got bitten in the face. Dale got a couple bites on the legs. Oh, yeah. um, um, and the situation was that the dog had sort of gotten away from the owner and was running down Putney Mountain, um, and, and uh, the owner was trying to track it down with his car is my understanding, but I don't know. But Catherine Temple came across the dog, put it in her car, knew, knew where the dog was from, and took it home. When she went to open her car to let it out at the house, well, I guess she went up to knock on the door and then the dog attacked her and bit her in the face. Um, and I don't know exactly at what point Dale got bitten, but he got bitten twice in the leg. Uh, the dog was then, Chris, I think, was the first sheriff there. You were the first I sheriff was there. there. Okay, so why don't you tell us? All right, so I was called there. Um, Lieutenant McGowan was already there with some other members of Putney Fire. Uh, what we were told is she was bit in the face and the dog would not let them leave. Um, when I got there, the dog was just pacing the parking lot. Um, as long as everybody stayed still, and didn't try to leave or make a movement towards the dog, it didn't seem to mind. Um, when I got there, it started growling, coming towards me, tried to pepper spray it, that failed. Um, so what I heard from Lieutenant McGowan was Dale Temple tried to go towards Catherine or take care of her after she'd been bitten, and the dog charged at him, bit him on the leg, and it's unclear whether the dog charged at McGowan or a temple again, and the dog was hit with the spade shovel that was at the property already. Um, I got them out of there. I tried to get the dog into his cruiser once he got there because it has the protective cage in the back. Um, all was going well. We opened the door, seemed like the dog was going to go in, and then out of nowhere, it charged full speed, teeth showing, growling at him. When we had to use the, we call it the bear fogger, the large. OC spray can. Um, and then from there, anytime you tried to get near the residence or the dog, uh, it was highly aggressive. Game Warden Price had to come down with a catch pole and stand in the back of his truck while he circled the canine to get it around the canine's neck. Um, our main concern is, from my understanding, the dog was found in Dummerston at the horse stable, which is about four and a half miles from. Um, Raymond's uh, residence. Mm -hmm. The horse stable in Dummerson. Oh, so I, when you go down Putney Mountain Road and you continue down um, West Hill right. and crossing that dirt section of Putney, it was all the way down there. So it was a substantial distance. Um, we yeah, made comments. Yeah, I thought it was in Putney. Is it Putney? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm not 100% no, familiar with I that, think, but that's yeah. what she, had, uh, Catherine, had told me. Uh, okay. The dog was at the horse farm that she works at? Which I think is this one okay. over here. That's my impression. Yeah. I could be wrong. And then she no. put the dog anyway. in the car at that point, brought it back up oh, to the okay. house, and that's when everything happened. Right. So from what I've been told by Catherine, that isn't the first time she's taken the dog home. It's the first time she's taken the dog home that no one was home, and it's been that aggressive. It's been semi-aggressive in the past, but not anything more than a, a deep growl. Um, 
we were able to get Raymond to meet us at the Putney Fire Station after we pepper sprayed the dog and got him in the car. Um, and he told us he was late for a VA appointment, that he was trying to get the dog in the truck. The dog refused, wouldn't get in. He chased it around Putney Mountain for a little bit with it um, and ultimately just said, screw it, I'm late for my appointment, I'm, I'm going. Um, our concern is in the vet records, they won't, they, it says make sure the dog is a muzzle, it's aggressive. Um, it definitely would fit the type of aggressive, vicious dog by statute. Um, and our, our concern from the sheriff's office is the owner is, doesn't show the capability to be able to take care of this dog and keep the public safe from it. Um, he even made the comment to us, well, gosh, if it's actually bitten somebody now, um, I think I'm afraid of it. So if we have a dog that's gonna get out and he can't even physically restrain it, um, you know, that, that causes some great concern for us. And do we, I know it was then, I mean, it's required to be in quarantine, quarantine for I think 10 days. Yeah, it was a 10 day quarantine. Um, and it was at Vermont, New Hampshire for that, at least initially. No, so it was at Vermont, New Hampshire to get decontaminated from our pepper spray. Oh, that's all that was mm -hmm. there. Okay. And then he was told that it had to be quarantined in his house and the only time he could come out was by leash by him to use the bathroom and then brought back inside. Yeah. Um, was that done? I don't know. We didn't receive any other complaints after that. So the owner of the dog is renting. Right. So he doesn't own the property. He does property. not own right. the property. Yeah. Um, well, I guess the, you know, the, I, I, I guess my feeling would be that the dog, even after this quarantine period, from the sounds of it, the dog should be restrained to the property. Um, I don't know. Whether whether the owner is capable of that or not, I don't know. Um, but I, I I think that or or it should be muzzled. I guess um, you know whether statute. I if it's under vicious dog, does it does it statutorily allow for disposal of the dog yes, or not? We printed it out um, to bring with us today. So it talks about being off the owner's president, uh, premises or off the owner. So in other words, free and right. wild. Yeah. Um, if it attacks or bites a person, that person is able to file a complaint. You guys as a town have seven days to investigate and address that complaint. Um, your authority is um, to have the domestic pet or wolf hybrid disposed of in a humane way, muzzled, chained, or confined. And you have to send it certified mail with the return receipt. And can you just cite the statute for me? It is Title 20 under Internal Security and Public Safety. <coughs> and it's VSA 3546. 3546? Yeah. Okay. So subsection A talks about the bite itself, B is the complaint process, and C is your uh, authority as a town body. And as far as I know, we haven't, I mean, I, I know that we have been informed about this. Have we received an official complaint? No. Okay, so that seven day period, I, I guess we have to find out, um, you know, I mean, if the owner is <coughs> feeling like he can't control the dog and the dog needs to be put down. So the seven days just you guys can redo it. The seven days is your obligation, not the right. person who's bit's obligation. Yeah, yeah. They, no, like they have an unlimited, that, so to speak. Right. No, that's why I was asking whether yeah. we had received, because if we, if they want to proceed with this as an official complaint, then we'd have seven days right. to, to manage it. I guess, I mean, you know, maybe the first thing, and I don't know whether you want to do this possibly, Chris, is just go up and check with the owner and see whether he's made a decision about mm -hmm. what he intends to do right. with the dog. Um, if, if, uh, you know, if he wants to keep the dog, then I guess we have to figure out what restrictions we would place on that um, yep. and how to go from right. there. Or, or whether we, I mean, my understanding, and I don't know whether this is how this works and uh, research the statute more, but my understanding is that the, the owner of the dog is entitled also to a, you know, whether it's officially right. a hearing, yes. but to be heard. Yep. Um, so. Well, uh, we, we have, have the ordinance and the process for a vicious dog yes. complaint. Within, yeah. So I would think we would have to do that. Start with, with all parties. And then go from yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. 
So if you could follow up on that, Chris, Absolutely. that would be great. And just find out, you know, he may say, you know what, I realized I can't handle it, and I'm going to get rid of the dog, or he may not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anybody? Questions? No, it was mm -hmm. a dog uh, current with its? Yes. 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 It was licensed yes. current vaccinations. Um, and our thing was just to stress the, the, the possible safety concern. I mean, this, right. is a, this is a very large dog and adults, it seems as if as long as you leave it alone, it will not attack you. Right. It's not that just uncontrollably aggressive, vicious, but my, our concern from the law enforcement side is if it's going down Putney Mountain Road and some child Try sliding it. in the yeah. driveway, it says, oh, a dog and charges it, it, it could go very right. bad, yeah. yeah. Does the landowner know? The land, uh, I the have been owner. told that the landowner does know. Okay. Uh, I have been also told, and this is strictly anecdotal, that the landowner has said that they don't want the dog to remain on the property. Uh, that right. I mean, that's like okay. serious hearsay, so I have no idea. But um, okay. that would be between the the landowner and. Um, and the tenant, the yeah. owner of the dog. I was just curious because it was brought up as a yeah. rental situation. Oh. Okay. Um, the other thing I don't know is that do we have the, uh, and again, this would be a review of statute, um, do we have the authority to dispose of the dog if there wasn't an official complaint made about the dog? Um, which I, I think the people involved would probably be willing to do that, but if I'm not sure we have authority to do that if we haven't had a complaint lodged. So we should, well, exactly, we should find that out. Yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, it's in some ways that aspect of it is more of sort of a civil complaint than it is a municipal mm. issue. Um, but, but it may be that we can manage it as a municipality as we choose, I, I'm not sure. Uh, so we should find that out and go from there, and I will review that statute as well. In a few years in the morning. Yeah, I read it when I first started, and I vaguely remember that we do, but Have the authority, I don't even wanna, without a complaint. Yeah, yeah I don't want to say sure. that definitely yeah. because it's been yeah many months. No, and if it's it. and if it's vague, we could have the LCT clarify it or right. something. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, so and I, you know, I've said this before, but often the statutes are vague. For the purpose of allowing them to be open to interpretation, but um, we don't want to choose to interpret them right. the wrong way. Right. So, um, but again, the, the, home, the dog owner may have already made some decisions. So. All right, good. Thank, well, thank you, you both awesome. for coming. No problem, no problem. Um, and Chris, you'll just let. Yep, I'll yeah, report yeah, to you, Karen. I'll just design. make contact and we'll go from there. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank cool. Thank you. Cool. Sure. Thanks. Have, have a good night. night. Thank you. All right, um, so select board items, discussion and action. First item for discussion and action is the audit approval. And Did you? for our TV audience, we met with John Mudgett at yes. the, John Mudgett is our outside auditor who does our annual audit, has for a number of years now. Um, and there were a couple comments, but no clear significant problematic findings. Right. Um, so he had suggestions as to how to tune things up a little bit and he and Karen have already worked on that and Karen has responded to yes. his statements. Uh, his recommendations. His recommendations yeah. and um, and so I think we have a plan in place. Um, I'm, you know, I, it was also my feeling from John that he didn't feel there was anything at all that sort of crossed the line as far as the appropriateness of the audit. It was more about sort of methods and making sure yeah. we're covering all. Um, but he felt confident that the audit was accurate and, yeah. and complete. More about fixed assets and depreciation. Yeah, how to, how how to, to categorize things and record. The yeah. software program. Yeah. So uh, we reviewed that audit at our Last meeting, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. At our last meeting, and so unless anybody reviewed further and had any questions or comments, we could <clears throat> probably go ahead and approve the the audit. Yeah, I'm comfortable with it. Right. It's pretty thorough. Yeah. 
So I'll move to approve the audit for the town of Putney, uh, June 30th, 2018. I second that. Been moved and seconded to uh, approve the 2018 audit. Um, yeah, no, you did. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> no, I just wanted to make yeah. sure it was not listed as in two years. Gotcha. Um, as of completion of fiscal year on June 30th, 2018. Uh, uh, if there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, So our next item for discussion, and I don't think we have action on this, but maybe we do. Oh, do we, we have to sign up? <coughs> um, yeah. Is to uh, look at the public informational meeting notice of Australian ballot. Uh, and so this is to notify people that there will be an Australian ballot vote. Um, so last year I went through the minutes. Mm -hmm. And when we had the public informational meeting to appoint town clerk and treasurer, mm -hmm. we had that very same document That's right. yeah. in the minutes. Mm -hmm. You approved it, you signed it. So I think that's <coughs> a legal notice signed off by you that you approve. And I just didn't want to miss a step, especially with this vote. Mm -hmm. And because it's a bond, it's associated with the bond. Okay. So, so basically, this is it's yeah. So I mean, this this meeting has been posted, has been yep noted. Yep, and it's noted um, in that um, document as well. The last paragraph, Josh. Right. Yeah. For February thirteenth. Public and informational meeting. February twenty seventh. Yeah. It'll be at Putney Central School, mm -hmm. in the library, mm -hmm. at oh, five o'clock. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, uh, we'll formulate a motion around that. Uh, so this is just approval of notification of the public informational meeting notice. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> okay. Well, I'll say I'll move uh, pursuant to twenty four VSA seventeen fifty six. I'll move to. Um, to say that we've given notice for the public informational meeting of registered voters at Putney relative to Article 8 to be voted on by Australian ballot at annual town meeting on March 5th, 2019. And this would be incurring a bond in the dentist for the purpose of purchasing the renowned gravel pit, 32 acres in the town of Jumbiston. Um, with the town of Dummerston participating in a 50-50 venture for not to exceed $2 million. Did you get all that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to spell it in this. <laughs> uh, let's see. That's, I think that's yeah, pretty yeah. good. And the meeting will take place mm -hmm. today, on the 13th at 6 p.m. Today, which has been warned and then the but almost more importantly for the purposes of this is that on the 27th, which we will revisit this mm -hmm. if there's interest in it. Um, and importantly, the reason we're having that is because we have to have a meeting about an Australian ballot issue within 10 days, days. of town meeting. Correct. So that falls within that 10 day period. So. I second. So it's All been, yes. <laughs> It's been moved and seconded to approve the public informational meeting notice as presented and stated. If there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Trying to confuse us with these little signs upside down. They work. I want to make sure you notice. Um, all right.
Yeah, so that's that. And then it's on to the town manager's report. I did not prepare one. Okay. That's all right. Because of the time. Yeah. Um, warrants. We have warrants. All right, I'll move to approve and execute the warrants as presented upon review. I second that. Been moved and seconded to approve and execute warrants. You. There's no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, payroll warrant dated February 8th in the amount of $10,191.80. This includes the library. Printed it. I didn't bring it because it looked like that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I even. <laughs> and that would be an old version too. So. Okay. Well, this was the one from yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Yep. You're yeah. good then. Um, payroll warrant dated February 12th in the amount of $9,610.44. This is just general town employees. I don't know about this one. Daily. There's a couple of them here that are a little, Ooh. Sh little shady there. Ooh. Select board pay. Of course, we like that. Finally. Yeah. Oh, that too. Yeah. We'll just get it right back to the time. So one of those is going to be issued. Or do we have them? <laughs> Treasurer will sign them tomorrow. <laughs> Good. Do you want to pick yours up? <laughs> Same time. I drop my tax. I was going to say, I'll just sign it right back to you. Right back to you. This Friday. <laughs> We did not get the sandwich board out, but oh, yeah. we had not piled over anyway. I know. I, was, I meant I was going to do it over the weekend, but and other things. Okay, accounts payable warrant um, dated February fifteenth through February fifteenth. Okay. Um, Total amount is $53,633.47. I also want to mention that um, we were without a bookkeeper today. She was sick. And Alyssa took on um, getting payroll completed and accounts payable. Good. Which is probably why the Thank accounts you. payable said February 15th to February 15th. It's okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not okay. even a... As long as it closes on February 15th, <laughs> we're good, right? Yeah. Checks will be issued on Friday, so but she did step in and muddle through it, and uh, she did a good job. Thank you. She probably didn't even really muddle that much, I imagine. <laughs> um, town reports at the printer, we should have that by Friday, if not Friday, Tuesday. Um, we do have a holiday on Monday. We are closed. President's Day? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, Good. So, yeah, we'll either have town report in house on Friday or Tuesday, but they will go out in the mail next week. We did the check report. That's kind of a cheat sheet. Yeah, no, I figured, uh, yeah. I figured you would. You but it's, and I didn't even think about yeah. that, but I'll show you. Did something happen with the sidewalk snowblower? The sidewalk I'm d oh, The only reason I'm asking is because I noticed half of the sidewalk down Kimball Hill 
or like up above Kimball Hill. All of that is done and everything below it isn't. But that was, this, maybe they just haven't gotten to it. Well, I looked out tonight and I noticed that the sidewalk was plowed because I was going to get the mail earlier and it okay. wasn't done. So. Okay, so maybe it was just done later. You know, yeah, they yeah. have to like fuel off the I run yeah. back and forth. And, because I attempted to walk it this afternoon, I can say it was somehow strange. Uh, the plow had driven through, but had not uh, actually removed the snow. I don't know whether it maybe it was sent the belt or a yeah. chair or something. A shear pin maybe might have, have gone. Yeah. Yeah. That happens a lot. Yeah. It was like it started up near the school, and then it got halfway down. Yeah. And yeah. No they more. don't report any you know, breakdowns. So. <laughs> they don't call you every single time? No. <laughs> you Brian, don't want them to do that? <laughs> I had Brian text me his hours, so, you know, for the guys so they can get paid. Oh, gosh, yeah, they must be working a lot. They actually, yeah, they, you know, they've been putting hours in every week. There's so. yeah. some they messy stuff the these days. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they did a good job keeping up with that. And this morning when I came over from New mm -hmm. the East West Road was it was a little greasy. There was a couple of times when I just like, all right, slow down. Yeah, the <laughs> stuff was a little. It was, you couldn't it, stop. It was a mix. Yeah, you know? it was weird. And it varied a lot depending upon elevation. I yeah. Guess too, yeah. Well, right in the village when you're coming down the backside, mm -hmm. you know, to come into the. Yeah, yeah. That's scary. It's sketchy up there. Mm -hmm. But Route Thirty was. Messy, yeah. So if the state road is messy, you know, mm. they had a hard time keeping up with yeah. it. Yeah. No, they, I thought our roads were pretty great, all things considered. I had to leave early this morning, so. Yeah. I had good reviews. Yeah, the check register. There's a little bit. Right. It's right below that, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Mr. Fairman, you may or not may or may not have known that we were starting at five tonight. We had an unusual start time because we had a meeting at six fifteen. So we had we already had an opportunity for public comment, but I'm happy to reopen for public comment. We we have to be in Dummerston at six fifteen, so we have time. But if you have anything to comment on? You're Thank welcome, you, Mr. Chairman. I would. I was unaware of the change of time. So uh, this is very brief, but I'm. Uh, I have an open letter to you that I'm going to read into the public record. Sounds good. Regarding the uh, uh, Putney Town Records. Regarding, sorry. Putney Town Records. Uh huh. Putney Town Records are not our town clerk's records. They are not our records. They belong to everyone who has ever lived and ever will live in Putney. We here and now are responsible to everyone, past, present, and future. The reason to digitize Putney Town records is not because we have the technology, nor because we have $83,000 in growing public funds that someone would like to be paid. The reason to digitize Putney Town records is because we are responsible to everyone who has ever lived and ever will live in Putney. To ensure that we act responsibility, responsibly on their behalf, we should fully understand and comply with professional archival standards and best practices recommended and explained by the Vermont State Archives and Records Administration in the Office of Secretary of State Jim Condos. As a concerned citizen, I have consulted Mr. Nicholas Conizzo, Records and Information Management Specialist, who has provided published guidelines and said that their roving archivist can visit Putney to provide specific professional guidance. We have begun, however, by asking the supplier of the photocopier in the Putney Town office to rent us a KIPP 7100 large format scanner printer copier. Irreplaceable Putney Town records should be scanned gently by a flatbed scanner or digi digitally photographed. The KIPP 7100 is a sheet-fed scanner, flexing, pulling, and abrading documents by rolling them into a slot while risking tearing by jamming in the feed mechanism. 
Digitized destruction of irreplaceable Putney Town records cannot be done over. We have to do it right the first time, now and always. It is time to ask Mr. Conizzo to schedule a visit by the roving archivist to begin and complete a Putney Town records plan for now and always, including digitization. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I assumed it was a flat plate copier. I didn't. That me never too. even yeah. occurred to me. Um, and I don't. Uh, so we will have to revisit that question of uh, availability of a copier because obviously that's important. Sure. And, and Mr. Chairman, you know, uh, I, 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 at your last meeting when it came up, I didn't know either. But what I did was looked it up on the manufacturer's website. I looked at their specifications. I also looked at their user manual. Yeah. And there's no doubt that it is a, a sheet of fed copier where you, where you feed a piece of paper into a slot and it takes and over, it assuming yeah. that everything works right. Yes, yeah. right. That would mm -hmm. not be the right method for these. And have you informed the town clerk of that? Uh, via the, is via the, the town letter. clerk aware of this now or not uh, yet? Uh, he will receive his copy. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, yes, you have MCC there. Yes. Uh, I have yeah, received. so we should just make, because I don't think he would disagree with you about that. I'm oh. assuming he didn't realize either that that's the matter. Oh. Are we sure that the KIPP 7100 doesn't have the ability? The flatbed. The flatbed ability as well because many oh. of them are built with both. Indeed. Uh, however, large format scanners are not the same as the ones we are used to that, you know, on your photocopier where you lift up the lid. Uh, as I say, I, I went to the official uh, uh, KIPP as a company uh, that makes these machines. I went to their website, took a look at the specifications for that series of machines, the 7100 series, and I also took a look at the user manual for the 7100 series. And uh, uh, it does not have that, that, that facility. You feed the document into the slot, period. Now the reason for this is uh, it, 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 uh, it, it, uh, it, it scans and, and copies up to 36 inches wide, but the length is variable. It, 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 it has roll fed paper. Mm -hmm. So you begin to get the idea. It, it basically looks at how much went in and it matches it up going out. Mm -hmm. So it really does have to roll it in so it knows how much it's got. Mm -hmm. Which, Which it, would be would, very helpful for certain applications, but probably not appropriate for for our application. Uh, no, no, it would not be, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very useful for applications, say, like an architect's office, right, exactly. where they want to run yeah. off another set of appliance to give to the yeah. client or a town uh, to develop a review board or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, everything is fresh and new, so there's no problems with, uh, with it being uh, brittle or already damaged in some way or whatever. It's, it's, it's all brand new paper. But that's not the situation we're dealing yeah. with. All right. Well, thank you for bringing that to our attention. And, uh, well, you're most welcome, Mr. Chairman. And uh, thank you for uh, accommodating me uh, uh, at this time. Certainly. My pleasure. We had the time. So. Um, anything else, or that's it? Uh, no, sir. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so we've done warrants. So other business. We're just announcing that there is a uh, meeting tonight at 6.15 at the um, actually a scarf. Uh, Dummerson School. In the science room. Science room, okay. And uh, hopefully we'll see lots of people there, um, more than we see here. Uh, but, but we have no idea. You never know with these things. No. Um, executive session? Not tonight. Okay. <laughs> um, next meeting date would be, well, in 40 minutes in Dummerston. And then our next select board meeting date, regular select board meeting date, is February 27th. At and 5 p.m. At 5, we're okay. doing it also? Okay. <coughs> Putney Central School. Putney Central School. For the gravel pit. In the library and the <coughs> purpose of Excuse the me. hearing for the, well, we'll have a regular select board meeting, but we will also have public uh, information public meeting. information for gravel pit purchase for related to the Australian ballot. So, 
And if there's nothing else, motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.